Hello, welcome to New Mystical. We are continuing our series on baseball prediction. We are now in the fifth video in the series uh, where we're going to get the raw pitcher data and add it to our model. So uh, if you remember in the previous video, we got the odds data. We showed how to get that. We showed how to analyze it. We compared our model to the, the Las Vegas odds and saw that, you know, unsurprisingly, the Las Vegas odds were predicting the baseball games a lot better than we were. Of course, our model was very simple and just had a few basic team hitting statistics. And so it's not surprising that when we ignore the starting pitcher entirely, that we're not getting very good probabilities. But we showed how to evaluate them, how to show that that Las Vegas probabilities were in fact doing better than ours. And we gave some compelling uh, examples where we were making the biggest mistakes uh, when we failed to adjust for the quality of the starting pitcher. So in this video, we're going to show how we're going to go online, get the starting pitcher data, how we're going to scrape it to get the numbers that we need, and then save it to files, and then actually add pitcher drive features uh, into our model so that we can then make better predictions. Before I continue, I'd like to ask you again to please uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. It would really help me out a lot. Also want to add that the uh, notebooks I'll be using, again, will be available in my GitHub repo, and I'll have a link to that repo in the description below. Um, and with that, let's get started and move over to the notebook. Okay, so in our previous lesson, we compared our simple hitting-only model to the Las Vegas odds, and we concluded that getting the starting pitcher information and incorporating that into our model is going to be really important. So in this notebook, we're going to scrape the individual game-level pitching data from RetroSheet, we're going to then write a loop to be able to download all of this data for all of the pictures that we need to. But first, let's start by going to Retro Sheet. So if you see over here, you can go to Site Map, click on Players, and I'm going to go to Dwight Gooden. Uh, the 86 Mets were my uh, childhood dream team. So it's nice to relive some glory days. So let's scroll down here. You see they have a list of all the players sorted by letter. And we could go here to Dwight Gooden. And you see here, you have his batting record, which is probably not so interesting. But then we have his pitching record over here, which is what we want. But if you look here, you'll see that this is season level data. So they've got one row per season. What we really want is game level data. And if you click this link for daily, you now get the pitching log for that particular season. And this seems to be what we want. We have uh, one row per game, and it has all the important statistics that we'll want. Innings pitched, hits, batters faced, runs earned runs, and so forth um, for every game that Dwight Gooden appeared in that season. So this is this is what we want. Now the the, the challenge is in, in previous times we've gotten data, uh, we were able to just kind of read the table directly and read it nicely into a formatted table. This is a little more challenging um, because if you try doing that, basically it, it doesn't work so simply. So we've really got to dig into the HTML for the page to get these numbers out and do a little bit of, of sort of tedious work. Um, but this is this is what we want. So so let's let's go back into our notebook and see what it looks like when we just scrape the raw raw uh, HTML data for that page. So you can see we're gonna go take this URL and just grab the raw HTML um, using requests, the request library. And uh, let's look at the content, actually, what we get. So if you run this, you see you just get a huge HTML string. But it has, has all the information there. It's a little bit hard to read or even work with right now. So we're going to use a library called Beautiful Soup. And uh, it's basically, we'll parse this nicely for us and make it a little bit easy for us to, to uh, to work through and grab what we need. So first we take the page content, put it through Beautiful Soup, and you'll see it just prints it out a little nicer, a little easier to read. 
and lines up all the tags. And you can see all the information on the page that we saw before. And this is what we want, the pitching log for Dwight Gooden, right over here for 1985. So if you look at what comes out of Beautiful Soup, you can see that this line highlighted here, this is, this is the text that we want to get, right? This is what tells us what happened in this particular game against St. Louis. The next game against Cincinnati is on this line and so forth. So we need to grab out all these lines and format it properly and all of that. So Beautiful Soup gives you a, a way to basically traverse the HTML tree. So let, let's demonstrate how you would approach this for the first time. So one thing you do is take the children of the page and it will pretty them up for you. And you can see here, it, it gave us three things. It gave us one, the first child is just this line. The second child is just this character turn. And then the third child is kind of everything else. So let's dive in a little bit and see how that looks. So soup one of zero is just that line. Soup of one is just that character turn. And then soup of two is everything else. So we want to dive into soup of two. We could also, since that's the last one, if we go to soup of three, this is gone. Uh, we're out of range. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let soup one be the last child. So now we've, again, dug a little deeper. And then we do it again. Let's look at the children. And now you can see we're, we're, we're getting a little closer. So soup zero of one is this, soup of two is that, and so forth. And uh, again, if you go to the last one, This has the pitching lock that we need. So let's make this the last one and then dive a little deeper. So go to the next one. So again, we're getting close. Uh, here we go. And now we're gonna take a slightly different approach. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, I really want to go to this line that starts with opponent. So I'm going to kind of bank on this as the key. Saying, let me go to where I see the, the opponent, the line opponent, and then start sort of going through the lines from there. And, and, and hopefully I'll be able to grab out what I want that way. So I'm going to say, give me the index number where you've got the word opponent. That tells me it's line 12. So I say, okay, give me give me line 12, or the 12th element rather. And here you see, okay, we're, we're really getting there now. So this top line is really essentially the header that we want. And uh, let's go back to the raw page for a second. So we're in here, you can see this is the header that we're looking at, right? And the date has an HTML link to it. This number is the double header number. You can see it's mostly empty, except for occasionally uh, you've got a one or a two there if you pitch the first or second game with double header. Then you've got this box PBP link, right? And then you've got the opponent. The opponent refers to really these three things. It tells you whether he was on the road or at home, at or verse. Um, tells you who he pitched against and what league. And then everything else matches up with the, the above column. So starting, first time we see a number, it's gonna be game start, it's always gonna be one because it's game level data. Um, we kind of know then after that, everything lines up. So let's, again, we keep drilling in. Now we get this as text. And if you look at how it does the text, let's just look at the first 12 sort of text lines. I'm using get text here, which says for these each of these HTML things, just give me the text. And you see now we're getting what we want. This first thing is essentially our header. We're gonna have to modify it a little bit. Um, but then this next thing is the date. This next thing is the double header number, which is usually blank. And then this next thing, we can just skip it. We can just ignore it essentially. And then this fourth line, or 
you know, if we start counting at zero. So this is the zeroth line. One, two, three, four. And then we start with Python 4, and then we want every fourth line is going to give us really the information we want. When we start with line 1 and count every fourth, that will give us our dates. When we start with line 2 and count every fourth, that will give us our double header numbers. So this is how you approach web scraping. Really, it's a very trial and error process. You make it work once, and then you, you just keep doing it over and over again. And there's always going to be little things that come up, little corner cases that break what you're doing, and then you got to adjust your code and do it. So it can be quite tedious, but luckily for you, I, I, I've done it for you. So let's look at this function I wrote. So this is a function that says, give me the URL for that season, and I'm going to spit out a nice table that has all the information you want. So first thing I do is I use this time.sleep1. So um, this is a, something it's always worth putting in when you're web scraping. If you hit a website too quickly and you keep grabbing their, their, their HTML very quickly, it's going to shut you down. Um, so it's good to always put in a pause. So this tells it, hey, every time we call this, just wait a second, first thing, and then go grab what you want. This way, if you're calling this in a loop, it, uh, it, won't, it won't get you turned off, blocked from the page. And then if you see these next lines, I, I give them different names, but this is all the stuff we just did before. I give them different names instead of soup one, soup two, soup three, soup four. I give them a slightly more descriptive names, but um, it's the same thing. We're going to key off this opponent. We're going to get the section. We're going to strip some stuff away. Then what I did is I just took the header directly. I said, this is the header that I want. And I broke that up because remember there's that one column that I'm going to break into three things. It's the at verse, the opponent, and the league. And then we have all these columns that are the ones we want. So I just start with the header. I do it myself. And then I say, OK, we want to get the, the date. We want to get the, the reference from, for the day. But essentially what I'm saying is, start when I start with line one, first I'm going to grab all the dates. So if you go up here, I'm going to start with line one and take every fourth thing and call that the date. And I'm going to build up all the dates of the games. Um, and I'm also going to get the, the, the reference to that box score. So you can actually drill in and get like the box score. I'm not going to use that right now, but I, I grab it right here in this function just in case. Then I'm going to start with this line 2, Python 2, and skip every four lines. And that's going to be my double header numbers. So that's these ones that are all blank right here. And then finally, I'm going to start, uh, well, Python 3, um, I just, I grab those, uh, I grab those uh, links again. I don't really think I'm going to use them, but I just grab them for kicks. But then the main thing is here, I'm going to create my main data matrix by starting with line 4, Python 4. So I skip the header, the date, the double header number, and this link here. And I start here. And I say every fourth line gives me the main information I'm interested in. So that's my main data matrix. So I just build that all up. And you see, I, I strip the white space, and I split on, uh, I split by white space. And uh, I take 29 rows. This is something I had to put in for some of these corner cases. Every once in a while, there's something that, that breaks a little bit. Um, and then I just put it together in a data frame and uh, return that data frame. So let's try it out. So I have my URL again. Let me just demonstrate it. So I've got my URL is... Dwight Gooden's 1985 season. So I'm going to call this function. Oh, I forgot to run the function. And we get this nice data frame. And you see, it's it's nicely formatted, has everything that we want. So this is going to be super helpful because now if I want to know how Dwight Gooden, if I want to come up with some features for Dwight Gooden's, let's say, this game against St. Louis that he played, 
I can now say, okay, how has he done, let's say, in his last 10 starts? I could add up all the innings pitched, all the batters he's faced, faced all the home runs he's given up, how many hits he's given up, and so forth in the past. I can get all of that easily. Now, that was just one season, so I really want to get the whole career of the player because I want to be able to sort of bridge across seasons. So let's go back to, uh, to Dwight Gooden again. So if you remember, we got to that page by clicking this daily link that gave us the season, right? So um, each of these has a link underneath, and I don't know if you could read it in the screen below, but um, we, we essentially want to click on each of these links and grab that data. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to this page, the player page, and try to harvest all of the links um, for that season. Now, this is batting record, so actually we don't want the batting record one. We actually want the pitching record one so that we have records of every time he pitched. And you can see there's a link here that we can get. And so we now are going to dig into this page with this URL and uh, see if we can get out the links. So we need to want to get all the season links for a player. So I'm going to go to this page now. So this is the HTML of the page we're just looking at. And if you scroll down, you see this is batting record. So this is not quite what we want. We want to go down to pitching record. Pitching record. And you can see these different links. We want the ones that correspond to the daily. So you see this text daily. And then this is the link that's sort of underneath it. And it's a relative link, but that's fine. We can reconstruct the entire link. Uh, for our purposes, but you see it kind of has this code. It's the letter. It has a number for the season. Then it has, a, a in this case, a letter K. Then it's the pitcher ID. Then it's a counter, 001. And then it's the, the, the year 1984. And you can see it follows that pattern over here, too. Then it's 002, 1985. K good D 001. That's Dwight Gooden. That's his ID. And then 002 and then 1985. So you might try to just if you if you knew this pattern well enough and you relied on it, uh, you could rely on it. You might not need to do this second step that I'm doing right now, but we're gonna see it ends up being a little complicated because when people are traded, uh, they'll have different uh, different season pages for each team. So it's not quite as easy as just knowing what years they were they were in baseball. Okay, so I'm going to go through this a little quicker because it's a similar process. So again, I, I go down, I figure out which child I want in each of these situations. I get to this body. Now here I'm going to take a slightly different approach than I did last time. So now here I'm going to work, rather than with the text, I'm going to work with the tags. So and this is to demonstrate uh, some of what Beautiful Soup can do. So if you see in HTML, there are these tags that start with uh, a word inside a, you know, less than and greater than symbol. And then they end with uh, the same thing with a, with a slash in front of it. So again, we see these links uh, that we want. This is the batting record, so this is not quite the one we want. Uh, we want the pitching record, which is again over here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, our plan of attack is going to be this. We're going to find the pre-tag that starts with pitching record after we strip the white space. And then we're going to grab all the A tags that correspond with the word daily. So we want to get, we want to get down to here, this one, this pre-tag. And then if we grab all the A tags and say, give me the A tags that correspond to the word daily. That'll give me those links that we wanted. So let's try that out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use this find all function to say find all the pre tags. Then I'm gonna say let's look at the text that I get when I strip uh, everything, all those tags. So you see we get this list of strings, and we want this one that starts with pitching record. So then we could just go right to pitching record. 
So that's the pre-tag text. And then I'm going to say in that pre-tag text, where does it start with pitching record? So it's going to be line seven. And again, I could do that programmatically and just say, OK, take the index. And now find all the A tags. So now I've got all the A tags in that pitching record section. But we just want the ones that start with daily. We don't want the other links. So then I say, give me the attribute, the href attribute for all the text if the text is the word daily. And I get the links. And now, just like that, I have all these links that are exactly the links I want. So I can, let's put this all together now. That's what this function is going to do. It's going to say, OK, give me just now a picture ID. And I am going to uh, find, construct the URL. So you have to sort of decode their URL naming scheme. And then get all of those links. So that's going to be one step. Give me, give me the ID, get all the links. So let's try this out, make sure it works. Okay, so now I've got all these links to all of Dwight Gooden's seasons. So I started with just his ID, which is in our main data frame, how they're represented. And then, for example, if I say, just give me the season for this, this 1986 season, let's say, Let's see if that works. This takes a little bit of time, and then boom. So this is his 1986 season. And now I can get all the data for an ID, for a given ID. And it's just basically get all the links, and then uh, create a data, create a blank data frame, and then iterate through the links and concatenate all the data into one big data frame, and then return that. So again, we're counting on a couple of things. We're counting that the links are going to be in the right sort of chronological order. Um, so these are things you might want to keep an eye on as we work with the data. But it generally all works out. And so let's try it all out. Let's get our Dwight Gooden data. So it's going to run for a few seconds here because remember we're sleeping for a second between each poll. So if he's got you know 15 or so seasons, it's going to take a good 15 seconds of just sleeping time, let alone the time to uh, to actually pull and parse the data. OK, we're done. Um, and now let's look at the info. So we've got 430, uh, 430 lines. One thing to notice is it's loading in everything as text, which is fine, because we're going to save this to a file. And then when we reload it, we could just make sure it reloads it, uh, the way we want it to. But we've pulled 430 games. and. OK, so we're in business. So now if you give me an ID, I can pull that person's entire history into a nice data frame. OK, so what's our plan of attack now? We want to have this table for every single picture in our data frame. So first thing we do is we're going to load in our data frame, our main data frame, this game level data that has one row for every game uh, since 1980. And then we're going to grab all the starting picture IDs um, so you could see there's 2785 unique home starting pictures, 2800 unique visiting starting pictures. But as you might suspect, when we put them together, you've only got 3000 different pictures since 1980. So according to this, since 1980, from 1980 to 2022, there have been 3015 unique starting pictures. And you could see I get an array of all of them. These are the first 10. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just run in a big loop. We're going to run through all these starting pictures. I'm going to print their ID just to see where we're at, get all their data, and save it in a file with their, their picture ID and write it to a file. So I'm just going to show this for the first two. So I put this colon two here because I don't want to run it for all. So th this part does take a while. So we can see kind of at what speed it goes. Because remember, I'm, I'm I'm being a little conservative even on how much time I wait. I'm waiting a second between every poll. You could probably lower that and make it a little faster, but you risk getting blocked. So, um, But this this will take, I pulled this over the course. I like would run it before I went to bed, and it probably took me like three nights to pull all the data. So it, it takes a little bit of effort. Um, 
And again, you could probably speed that up if you needed to. Okay, and we're done. So I did this offline already. So if you were doing this at home, you'd have to, again, invest some time and, and do this for several, several, uh, several nights worth probably of pulling data. But now let's imagine we've done it all. We've got all these uh, CSV files for each picture saved, you know, with a naming scheme that lets me get the file for a picture. Now, what do we want to do? We've got the raw level data, get raw game level data for each picture. Now we can derive features for for each of our pictures. So we want to what's going to be our plan of attack? For each starting picture, we can load their raw data, create features. Whoops, create features for each game based on the previous performance. And then we're gonna save this into a dictionary structure for easy lookup. So again, the first the first step, we wanna augment our data frame. We wanna be able to say for each game, these were the two starting pictures. Here are some features about how good or bad those pictures are that will help us predict the game better. So what do we wanna do first? First, I wanna get all of these features ready for each picture. So I'm going to create a data structure that lets me look things up easily. And that data structure is going to look like basically a dictionary of data frames. So let's demonstrate. So again, DF Gooden, I can now read. I saved all my files to a directory that looks like this, data slash picture data. And again, my naming scheme is pitching data underscore the ID, then dot CSV. So I can read Dwight Gooden's info, look at it. It's the same one we had before. Here's its head again. And, you know, we got to do some processing here, right? So one, one common thing is these innings pitched, uh, they look like float numbers, but if you start adding them up, you're going to get into problems because 0.1 actually means a third of an inning. 0.2 means two thirds of an inning. Uh, so you see everything's 0.1 or 0.2, but obviously it doesn't know that. So another thing to point out when we when we loaded this in, notice it converted everything back to ints and floats. So we're in good shape there. Data is still an object, so we might want to play with that later. So one of the things I'll need to do is convert the inning pitched their representation into an actual numerical representation. So change the point one to point three 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 three, and change the point two to point uh, six 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 six. So I do that with this line. It's just a little tedious line. So we add that in. But in general, how do we want to generate features for a starting picture? Well, as we discussed, what we want to do is we want to do a look back across end games for each picture. So it's similar similar approach to what we did for teams, except now we're looking at individuals and just the days that they pitched. So we'll need to aggregate statistics like their innings pitched, runs or earned runs given up, hits and walks given up, strikeouts, so forth. And we also got to figure out how we're going to handle it when pitchers are early in their career and they don't have a lot of history. How are we going to, what are we going to do in that case? So I don't want to spend too much time on all the details here, but one function I came out, which is helpful, is just to say, give me the data frame, give me the column, give me the window size. I'm going to sum it up. Um, and then a second thing is for the early for the early columns. Now for team level stuff, if you remember, we built up these team level features and then I said, you know what, we'll just throw out 1980. We'll use 1980 as just kind of a learning year. So we only, 1980, we had a lot of missing values because we didn't have enough history. So we just threw out 1980 and started predicting with 1981. Um, we don't really want to do that with these pictures because these pictures are all starting at different times. Teams have continuity over history, but but individuals don't. So what the approach we're going to take, and I'll detail this a little bit more later, is um, let's say we want to sum up their performance over the last 10 games, but they only have eight games. We're going to just then get the sum of the first eight games, and then we're going to do some adjustments, and I'll show what those adjustments are. So I had to define this function because I didn't, the Panda standard is to say, if you're doing a window size of 10 and you don't have 10 previous observations, just use an AND not a number of missing value. But we want to what we want to do is basically fill in those missing values with sort of the limited sum that they have. Sum up whatever you have if you have less than 10. 
And now we're going to come up with a function that basically says load and process the dating frame, the data frame for a particular picture. So you give me a picture ID. This function is going to load in their data. It's going to basically convert their date and double header number to a nice format so that I can look up the games very easily and match them to the games in the data frame. We're going to convert the innings pitched. And then I say for all these columns and for all these window sizes, oops, um, basically aggregate those columns over that window size. So for each of these columns, innings pitched, hits, batters faced, I'm going to get what was their, the sum of the 10 or 35 previous games. And I'm going to use a, this naming scheme to create these new columns. And then, so that, that's for sort of the, the raw aggregations. A lot of things I'm just going to sum up. And then the features that we want will probably be calculations on those things, right? So if I wanted somebody's ERA uh, over their last 10 games, I have to sum up their earnings pitch over the last 10 games, sum up their earned runs over the last 10 games, and then use the ERA formula on those inning, innings pitch and earned runs. And we also have this problem where we said we might have less than 10 games. What do we want to do in that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of set a minimum of how many how many innings pitched or batters faced I expect to see per game. And if you have less than that amount total, I'm going to average in some default value. So for example, for ERA, I'm going to say, you know what? Uh, when you have less than whatever enough innings pitched that I think is right for that window size, I'm going to fill in the rest as if you were an ERA5 pitcher. So I'm going to sort of, basically, if you don't have enough data, I'm going to average in a bunch of trials. I'm going to put a value that's not great because most new players are probably not that great. Um, so again, this is a judgment how to set these numbers, but um, you know, this is just to handle people kind of early in their careers. How do you how do you how do you handle a rookie, somebody that doesn't have any history? So then I go through and you can see I just do a lot of um, I do a lot of aggregation, and the result of this is to come up with things like the ERA over their last, over the window size, the whip walks plus hits over innings pitched. Um, I also came up with some other things. Uh, so hits, uh, hit walk percentage. So hit walk percentage, I, I say in terms of uh, based on batters faced. So of the batters you faced, what was their uh, hit and walk percentage? So it's essentially the opponents on base average. I also came up with this thing, which is, kind of like a modified slugging. Um, and I'll, I'll go into that a little later. I don't want to get into too many details here. But essentially, I aggregate all these columns. I do a bunch of formulas to uh, calculate them and also to average in sort of a bad value, a little bit of bad values, if they don't have enough history. And I do all that. And so now I got this function. So now when I look at my Dwight Gooden data frame, you can see I've, I've got all these now rolling things. So for example, this is, is ERA over the last 35 games. And you see for the first game, it's five because he has no history. So I say, hey, if you have no history, I'm going to treat you as a five ERA pitcher. And then over time, as you build up enough history, it'll start averaging down to what you actually are. Because if you have one game, I don't want to say, oh, your ERA is exactly how you did in that one game. I want to say, well, I still, I've learned a little bit about you. You've gotten a little, you're a little better. But then over time, as I build up more history, it reverts to what, what their actual ERA is. So now this is what we want, right? So we have, uh, for any game of Dwight Gooden's, I've got this date doublehead index. So if I know, if I want some features for the game that happened where Dwight Gooden was starting on June 10th, or June 1st, 1984, that wasn't a doubleheader. I could say, okay, Dwight Gooden starting 
his you know ERA is his ERA over his last 35 games is 4.35. So now, so this is helpful. So so now what do we have to do? We have to go through our data frame and uh, basically augment all these features in. So first we're going to load in that data. And again, we're going to get all the pictures. So the first thing I want to do is uh, create this dictionary structure I talked about. So I'm basically going to say for every picture, uh, map the picture name to their personal data frame. So that then when I want to look somebody up, I just look them up in the dictionary, which is very quick, grab their data frame, and then I grab their game identifier, which is the date double header, and look that up, which will also be very quick because it's set as the index. And then I can get the information that I want. Uh, so this part is slow. So this part, I have to load in all of the information. So this takes a little bit of time to build up. So you see it did 100. So it's not too bad. we got to get to 3,000. So I'll time warp to get through that. So then I write my big loop where I say, go through the whole data frame row by row, get the visiting starting picture, get the home starting picture, and get the identifier for the game. And I'm going to do a little check to make sure they're in there because uh, you don't want it to choke if it doesn't find it. So I say, if you're in my dictionary, get the data frame for the for that picture, the visiting picture. And if you see the game that I'm referring to, uh, grab uh, basically add all of those columns. Uh, to my data frame. Otherwise, if you don't find if you don't find the the picture of the game, tell me and I'll uh, and I'll uh, spit out an error so I can check it. Okay, so we've got to the end. We've loaded in all 3,015 pictures into this data frame into this uh, dictionary of data frames, and now. We're going to just define all the columns that we want to add. And then we're going to go through this loop and see how fast this goes. So we're going through each game. And you see, this is not too bad. It's already done 1,000 games. So we've got to go through 90,000 games. So I'll time warp a little bit to get through them all. So, uh, But it's going to look through, and we'll see how many times we missed. So OK, we see there's one, one miss where we couldn't find the starting picture. So it looked up that starting picture on that date, and it couldn't find anything. OK, so we're done. And if we scroll through all our 96,000 games, you see there's a handful of places where it didn't find the starting picture. Um, now, I don't know what happened here. There might be one hypothesis is maybe they announced the starting picture, and then bef before the starting picture even could take the mound, they were pulled from the game for some reason. But you see, there's not that many of these. And in fact, we'll, we'll go through and count them up. But I got to do this one last line where I add in all the columns to the data frame. And just, just to review, uh, I came up with a structure to, to try to simplify the process of adding these things. If you remember when I did this for the team data frame, I had this very ugly code where I had to sort of repeat a line a bunch of times to initialize these variables and then to add them to the data frame. So I decided to try to simplify this by making a dictionary. So that's why we have this dictionary here, is that um, by doing this, I initialize all of them with this one line. I basically say all the columns ahead of time, and then I initialize them in a loop, and then I add them to the data frame in a loop, which simplifies things a lot more. OK, let's take a look at our new data frame. So here's five rows five different games. And if you scroll all the way to the right, uh, you'll see that I have all these new things, uh, these new columns that I added in about the starting picture, the home starting picture, and the visiting starting picture. So that's going to be really handy for our model. Uh, let's just look a couple things. So I'm going to look at where it's zero, because these are the ones where I, where I didn't find a match. I suspect that those are the zero, those are the, the the results should be zero. I initialize everything to zero, and then I fill it in. So if there's a zero there, it should be because uh, 
I didn't fill it in. And if I look at these games, um, June 1980, June 2nd, 1982, August 20th, 1983. Uh, and if I scroll back up here, you see June 2nd, 1982, August 20th, 1983. So the games, there's a total of 25 games that uh, I didn't find matches for. And so I'm just going to throw those out. Uh, these are the other three. And you could verify that these are these are the ones we didn't find matches for. But to make simple, it's 25 games out of 90,000 where I didn't find the starting pitcher uh, data. So I'm just going to drop those and then save this file. And so now, just like that, we're, we're ready to go. We've now got a data frame where we've added in all of these really interesting features about the starting pitchers for each side. And in the next video, we're going to put these into our model and see how much better our model does now that it actually has some information about the starting pitchers. So I hope you'll join me for that. Again, if you could please like this video and subscribe to the channel would help me a lot. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video where we're going to add this in and improve our model. Have a great day. Thanks.